Don't forget, we are looking at what it takes to be a Christian. I told you 15 things that we are going to look at. We have looked at just four out of the 15. I told you what it's going to take you to be a Christian is that you have to depart from all sin. Number two, you have to deny yourself. That you have to forget yourself, abandon yourself to Christ as it were. Then number three, you have to separate from your family. Yes, you have to separate yourself from your father, your mother, your spouse, your children, and even from yourself, you have to separate yourself. You have to separate your life, even from yourself, for you to follow Jesus. And uh, number four, you have to have supreme love for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I told you, for you to have supreme love, how to show that, it's not by singing about it, it's not about praying about it, it's not about confessing and professing that I love Jesus, I love Jesus. You will show to Jesus that you love him when you obey his word. In John chapter 13, verse 17, John chapter 13, verse 17, the Lord said, If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. If you know this thing, in John 14, verse 15, Jesus said categorically that if you love me, keep my commandments. And I told you the commandments of the Lord sometimes are reasonable and sometimes they are unreasonable. Sometimes even what he will tell you might think, might appear as though it's contradictory even to the scriptures. Yeah, yeah. Whatever he tells you to do, once you know that this is the Lord, you will show to the Lord that you love him by obeying so unreasonable commandment like god talking to um moses to command the levite to kill their brethren yeah because of the idolatry and the lord who commanded isaiah to walk nakedly for three years just he has to obey god yeah and his secret too he slept with one side for that uh, for 40 days, another time for 350 days or thereabout. Now, number five, supreme love for the brethren. You have to love not only the Lord supremely, you have to love the brethren. The brethren are those who are the Christian like you, those who are born again, who are redeemed of God, who are following Christ, those are the brethren. That people that we are redeemed by the same blood of Christ, people that we have the same spirit of God, we are following the same Jesus Christ. That's the bread. Jesus said in John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. John 13, verse 34, verses 34 and 35. He said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. It's a commandment. So if I really want to be a Christian, I will love my fellow Christian. Yes. I will love. And as I have loved you, that you also love one another. The way Jesus loved us, that's the way we should love ourselves. Yes, I should love my fellow Christian even more than my siblings. That's the scripture. That's what we mean by the supreme love. Supreme love for the bread. That you also love one another. By this, all we know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another and how do i show my love for my brethren come to that epistle of john now apostle john who wrote the gospel also wrote three epistles yes now come to his first epistle the first epistle of john chapter 3 verses 16 to 18 we are told how to show our love for our brethren by 16 to 18 by this we know love because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. How do we lay down our lives for the brethren? You don't need two kidneys to survive. If two kidneys of a brother packed off. And uh, there is need for a kidney transplant. You should willingly allow, release yourself to, 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 to release one of your kidneys to sustain your, 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 your dying brother. That is what it means to lay down our lives for the brethren. Yes. Sometimes it is not even you releasing your body part now. <laughs> it might be that the money that you want to use to achieve one particular goal, probably you are saving towards your house rent and you don't want embarrassment from your landlord. Now, to lay down your life now, 
you you and there is a brother who needed urgent surgery and they needed money and you now release the money that you have saved for your rent and you are you you set your life to face the embarrassment and insult from your landlord or from your agent yes that is what it means to lay down your life for the bread but whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shut up his heart from him how does the love of god abide in him you say i love you my brother i love you sister i don't care i love you sister mary i love you brother joseph we are how do you show it when you have money when you have hardly things uh hardly things and your brother has they are in need of these things and you refuse to give them you are a liar you are a liar Verse 18 say, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue. Kana Christian, we always love in word and in tongues. Spiritual babies, that's why I say, my children, spiritual babies. We don't need to preach that to an adult Christian. No, there is no mature Christian that needs sermonization to do good. No, 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 no. That's why we say, you should become mature Christians. Say, my little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. What it takes to be a Christian is not just a supreme love for the bread. Another thing is that you have to carry your cross. Carry your cross daily. Now, what we say cross, cross is not your trouble. When somebody marry a, a knife and not a wife, uh -huh. The religious leader will say, that is your cross. No. When you marry a knife and it's not a wife, or you marry a, a terror who is a despot, uh -huh. a tyrannical man who wants to rule your life anyhow. In fact, if you will not submit, he will beat you to stupor. If I can beat you to death. And you say, that is your cross. No, 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 no. That kind of a persecution you marry, it's better you run away. Yes. Than to stay put and die untimely. Jesus said, if you are persecuted in this time, run away. That's what Jesus said. So, if you marry a man, and please, I'm not speaking about marriage. I'm only applying this scripture that carrying your cross. I'm just trying to let you understand that the cross does not mean trouble. It is not the ornament that is made like cross and you hang on your neck. No, no, no. That's not your neck. That's not the cross. That you just wear it. I'm carrying my cross. Cross here yeah, means where your will and God's will intersect. When you come to a juncture in your life and the cross and the will of God crosses your own will and you allow it to be so. Aha. You don't like it. Jesus did not like to die. Yeah, he prayed against the cross. Say, Father, don't let me drink this cup. But Baba insisted I have to drink. And he also submitted that. Not as I will. Your will be done. That is the cross. So, at every point in your life, where the word of God, the will of God, crosses your own will, and you submit, that is the cross. That you got, you just have to die. You just have to die. You have to die to your own personal desire. You have to die to your own personal will. Yes, that is the cross. You want to do business and God say, no, 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 I don't want you to pursue the line of business. I want you in the ministry. Oh, or you like to be a pastor and God say, no, I want you as a missionary. That you, I'll be using you in the jungle. And when you say, so be it, Lord, that is the cross. And that is what it takes to be a Christian. You have to carry your cross daily. You have to die to your desire. That's what Jesus means. Come to Luke 14, 27 again. It is good for us to read the scripture so that I can understand this thing. So the cross is not trouble. The cross is not the ornament, uh, the necklace you wear. No, no, no. That, that, that is made uh, in, in cross. No, no, no. That's, that's not it. Luke 14, 27. Jesus said, and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You have to hate yourself. The cross means hating yourself. Submitting, discarding your will, discarding your desire 
for his will to overpower you. Yes, that's, what, that's the cross. And then number seven, please don't, don't forget, supreme love for the Lord is number four, which in the last episode, now I'm dealing, I've started with supreme love for the brethren as number five, number six, carrying your cross. Then number seven, following the Lord nearly day by day. Once you deny yourself, you carry your cross and it's a daily affair, uh -huh. you will have your will. God didn't make us to be robots. And coming to Christ does not take our will. Does not take our desire. Our desires will remain with us. Our own will will remain with us. I want to sleep and I'm not, I have not committed any crime to sleep. But God does not want me to sleep. So, if I choose to do the will of God, it means that I will have to die to my desire or to the need of my body for me to do his will. So, if you do not discard yourself, if you don't forget yourself, it is impossible for you to carry your cross. And if you do not carry your cross, it is not possible for you to follow the Lord. So, denying self carrying cross and following the law, they are intertwined. So you can't have one without the other. You can't say, I want to deny myself and I will not carry my cross. No, 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 no. So deny yourself, carrying your cross, following the law, they are all together. So to follow the Lord nearly day by day is a matter. And number eight, there is a superstructure of the Christian character that you need to build on the foundation of your faith. You need to build the superstructure. Yeah, being born again is just a foundation. Yes, taking the yoke of discipleship is just, is just, is just a process. Now, but you got to build. There is what we call the superstructure of the Christian character and is recorded for us in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 to 11. Yeah, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 to 11. Look at the word of God. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue. These are the things, this is what, what we call superstructure of Christian character. Virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, Perseverance to perseverance, godliness to godliness, brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, that is virtue, character, knowledge, self-control, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, love, they must be in us. Not only that they must be in us, they must increase. That is what it means. That, and they abound. That is, I have to increase in my character. I have to increase in the quality of my character, in the quality of my knowledge, in the quality of my self-control. I have to increase in my patience. I have got to increase in my, in my godliness. I have got to increase in kindness. I have got to increase in charity. For if these things are yours, and about you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks this thing is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so... An entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Holy Father, I ask that you will bless this word in the heart of your children. Bring increase upon it. And by the reason of your word that they have heard, may you transform their lives. Let them be genuine Christians to the glory and the praise of your name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
We believe you have been blessed by the word of God you just heard. For further help or counsel, call this number 0806-615-6208 or 0703-284-4129. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Strago Media for more spiritual messages. Or visit our website at www.stragomedia.com to download those messages for free. Thank you for staying to the end of this program. Join us again, same station, same time next week. God bless you. Amen.